So, hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free maths videos for both the GCSE and A level maths syllabus organised very nicely, so do check it out. Okay, so this video is about transforming and sketching graphs. Okay, transforming just to me just means sliding, stretching them, and reflecting them. So you've got a graph and it's sliding them, we're stretching them like that. Okay, and sketching. Well, that's not really the main area of this topic, uh, this video, as it were. Um, Sketching is really quite a straightforward thing. You just draw the rough shape of a graph and say where it crosses the axes, and sometimes you note where the minimum point of the graph is or the maximum point. But that's the main thing is just to say where it crosses the axes. So that's just an overview of what's happening. Okay, now when we say transforming graphs, we're talking about any graph, right? There are some rules that you have to follow for any graph, okay? So fx, this thing here, okay, represents any graph. And there are certain things you can do to the graph. You can add 2 to the end of the function. Oh, let's talk about functions a little bit. This is an example of a function. A function can be anything, to be honest. Uh, fx equals sine x. This is one example. Uh, the fx, the function fx, yeah? When I say fx, I mean, I'm talking about functions, yeah? Okay. Uh, a function can be this. So I could write fx equals y x squared plus 6x plus 8 could be pretty much anything you want really okay but there are certain ways I talk about functions so let's talk about these things a little bit for example if I want to write um, I've got if, if fx happens to be sine x so you decide what your function is this is my function sine x okay when I say my function it's like function machines you put a number inside uh, on the, the function machine from one side do something inside the function machine like times by two or whatever okay and it comes out a different number at the end, okay? So this is a function because you put in a number for x, okay, into this function called sine, and uh, you do sine to x, so um, if x is 90, I do sine 90, and out comes 1. So in comes 90, uh, put go through the sine function and out comes 1. Okay, so that's just an example of a function, but these are functions as, and this is a function. And anything, any graph is basically a function, isn't it? Okay, um, so if I add 90 inside the function, that means the input is the inside the bracket bit, yeah? So if I'm adding 90 to the input, okay, um, it looks like this. I've added 90 inside the bracket sort of thing, even though there wasn't a bracket to be in there in the first place, because I'm changing the input bit, that's that's the input now, yeah? Before it was just x, now it's x plus 90, so I have to write it like that. And sometimes you times the whole function by 2, like I'm writing there, 2fx, okay? So 2 times a function, this is a complicated function already, but I'm times it by 2, so I'm doing uh, times 2, by this since since fx plus 90 was sine x plus 90 so 2 fx plus 90 would be 2 sine x plus 90 so that's that's kind of an overview of how functions work yeah um, I think I should just get on with it and show you the table because this is the crucial bit okay now you understand what fx means okay I'm going to tell you how you can transform any graph okay so if you've got a graph uh, and you okay I want to kind of give you an overview of this table now okay there are a couple of things you can do you can slide a graph that means kind of slide it sideways up or down okay uh, you can stretch a graph again you can stretch it in the vertical direction or the horizontal direction and you can reflect a graph vertically or horizontally now look this is all this horizontal stuff I put under the X direction basically because X stands for the sort of horizontal direction doesn't it and Y basically stands for the vertical direction okay now a couple of rules about what happens uh, generally you find that if you do a plus two or a times two whatever okay on the y side of things the vertical side of things things work like you expect so if i add two the graph moves up two the whole graph moves up two but if i add three inside the function i.e the horizontal side of things here okay it goes minus three remember 
going towards the right is a positive direction, going upwards is positive, and going left is negative. So when I add 3, it goes left 3. And when I go, when I do minus 3, it goes right 3. So everything is the opposite. If I times by 2, it divides by 2, it squeezes the graph, okay? But if I times by half, it stretches the graph, it times it by 2. Yeah, the same is here, but the opposite is here actually. It does everything like you expect. So, as I said, if I add two, it goes up two. The whole graph moves up two. If I take away two or take away five, see, the whole graph moves down five. So, as everything as you expect on this side, everything the opposite of what you expect on that side. Okay. If I times by two, it stretches the graph. Now, this is another point actually. Why should timesing stretch? Well. Imagine you got this dotted line here, okay, and this the maximum point over here on this dotted line is one. If I times that by two, that becomes two. If I that's a minus one here, if I times that by two, I get minus two. Okay, so timesing by two effectively stretches it because it makes all the positive numbers double, I mean bigger. So if I'm timesing by three, it'll be tripling it. If I'm timesing by two, like we've got here, we just double it, okay? And all the negative numbers are doubled as well, so they go even lower as well, okay? So it's going both ways. So timesing stretches, okay? Now, or squeezes, as I say. So as I said, if that's 2x, that makes it squeeze, okay? So all the x values is just half basically yeah uh, if I times by 2 here it makes all the y values double okay um, right uh, and oh yeah when you're doubling the y value it doesn't mean you double the x value as well you either doubling the y value or doubling the x value so this one the 2fx bit so um, I've got an example going on here I started with uh, fx equals sine x then I did plus 90, so we've talked about this stuff. If I add 90 inside the bracket, it makes it go left 90 degrees. Now, one block over here represents 90 degrees. If you know your sine graph, you would know that uh, one block over here would represent 90 degrees, looking, given the fact that the whole... Uh, that one cycle of the sine graph only represents 360, a quarter of that would be 90. Anyway, so you can see this original sine graph has moved left 90 to get to this dotted one here, because the f fx is the solid line, the dotted is f fx plus 90, and then um, I'm going to times the whole function by 2 to get this really fat line here. Okay, so this dotted line I've doubled, so all the positive things become double the height and all the negative stuff becomes uh, double the depth maybe, how low it is. Anyway, so that's that. And uh, I've missed out this thing here. So out, if you've got a negative number, that kind of means do the opposite, right? Okay, so minus basically means to reflect because if I did minus so if I put minus in front of here, minus 2fx plus 90, okay, this is 2fx plus 90, but if I did minus of this, okay, outside the function here, as we said already, this half of things, when you do things outside the function, it's the horizontal direction, right? So everything outside the function has a horizontal did I say horizontal? I meant vertical. Okay, all this stuff is vertical. So putting a minus outside the function has a vertical effect on it. So timesing it by minus 1 will reflect it vertically. Now timesing it by minus 1 inside the function will reflect it horizontally. Yeah, like it says. Yeah, like that. Okay, so that's that. Um, quick addition to this. Uh, when you this this topic can be com uh, uh, what can I say combined with a topic called completing the square. Another video you will find on sickmass.co.uk. Um, so if you complete the square on this, I'm not going to tell you how to do it now, but basically completing the square on this makes it x plus three squared minus one. So that's the same as that. Okay. Now that is like an x squared graph except for I've added 3 inside the function and taken away 1 from outside the function okay so that's like adding 3 inside the function I've actually written add 3 inside the function which means the x squared graph that used to go 3 0 0 like that like my mouse is doing okay has gone left 3 
Okay, and you know it says plus two should make the whole graph move up two. Well, if you did minus one, okay, taking away one one from there, it should make the whole graph move down one. Okay, so a common this is uh, two steps you've made by adding three inside the graph you've made it left three, and by taking away uh, one from outside the whole graph, the function, uh, you made it go down 1. Because remember, the whole function is basically x squared. Okay, Now you've added 3 inside the function and taking away 1 outside the function makes it left 3 and down 1. Okay, So you know that you, the minimum point used to be 0, 0 because that's what an x squared graph looks like. It goes through 0, 0. So the minimum point is moved from 0, 0 to minus 3, minus 1. Okay, and it's quite easy to work out where it's crossing the x-axis and the y-axis. When it's crossing the x-axis, you put y equals zero. So y equals zero when you're crossing the x-axis. So y equals uh, so basically this coordinate is two zero. This is four zero. So the y values are zero. So you put zero there, and you get zero equals x squared plus 6x plus 8. You solve that, and you find out that uh, x equals two and minus 2 and minus 4 you should say there. I'll correct that in a second. Let's correct that now. Uh, so minus 2 and a my mi so minus the uh, what's so as I was saying a second ago so um, yeah, I've sketched that graph now. Oh, and we have to work out when it cr when a line crosses the y-axis. Well, what is the value of x? Any point on the y-axis, x equals zero. So you put zero there. Zero squared plus zero plus eight is equal to y. So y equals eight. That's it. Very simple. Let's do this one. You might complete the square on another function, or you might just be given y equals minus bracket x minus 2 squared plus 9, okay? How would you draw that? Well, again, you know how the x squared graph looks like, okay? And you say, well, it's basically the x squared graph with minus 2 inside the bracket, okay? So minus 2 inside the bracket means you move right 2, because minusing goes right, adding goes left, okay, inside the bracket. So it's an x squared graph, and I've gone right 2, okay, and then I flipped it upside down, because that's the minus thing, minus outside the function, because the function x, x is something squared, okay, so that means it's flipped horizontally, because I've done minus outside the function, so it's flipped like that, okay, so, well, this y equals x squared graph, which is going through 0, 0, at that from after the minus 2 bit, it made it go through 2, 0. Now flipping that upside down would make it a sad face where the highest point is at 2, 0. Okay, so it's going like that. Okay, and then you add 9. So the whole graph is moved up 9 because you're adding 9 outside the function again. Yeah, the function is x squared. Okay, so the whole graph is moved up 9. And again, we so now we know the maximum point. Let's do the usual stuff of, um, what was it, uh, finding where you cross the x, x axis and the y axis. So when you cross the x axis, the y value is always 0. So uh, substitute 0 in there. So solve that and you find out that x would equal minus 1 and positive 5. So you cross the x axis there. And uh, where do you cross the y axis? Again, you put x equals 0, because x is equal to 0 throughout the y axis. Uh, um, so you put 0 there, minus 2 squared is 4 basically, minus 4 plus 9 is 5, so basically you cross at 5. And that's